Hey family, how are you? Hey, what's up y'all? Hey. Welcome, welcome, Karibu. We are here with another session of Awaken with Mark. And this time though, we're coming to you with everyone in, in the family that's in Africa. So uh, we want to take a moment to really bring forward everybody. So go ahead, guys. Say hi and tell folks who you are. What's up, everybody? I'm Josiah. I'm the oldest of the Bradley boys. Hey, everyone. I'm Daniel. I'm the youngest of the Bradley boys. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Marlene. I'm the mother of the four boys and wife of Mark. <laughs> so we want to give a special shout out to uh, Ethan, who is our number two son, mm -hmm. and also to Matthew, yeah. who's number three, yeah. and our daughter-in-law, Jen. Hey, Jen. Hello, as Jennifer. well as the grannies. So today we're going to answer questions that you all have asked, right, family? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And the reason why is because, quite honestly, I think that it's very rich what folks have been sharing yes. mm -hmm. in the comments sections of our various video postings. Now, a lot of the questions came from three reasons why people do not remain in Africa, but yes. they're not solely limited to that particular posting. Right. Yeah. Um, but right. you all ask great questions, and we won't be able to hit all of them, but we're going to hit some of them uh, with regards to us living here in Africa. I do want to say this, and that is that um, being here is really exciting, and our goal was just to document and share what our life was going along like. Mm -hmm. So having said that, what I'll do is just ask you to take a look at our About section yeah, on our out. channel. Mm -hmm. That's been updated. Uh, thanks to Matthew, our sons, who all, he's also responsible for the music, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, because he is a musician, a creative, he's a photographer, he wears a lot of hats. But um, many of you, I think, have talked about that. I don't want to get ahead of some of your questions, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, Matthew does do the, the music. So let, let me just tell you what our description says in our About section. What happens when an Afro-American family returns home to Africa? That's what our channel is about. Okay, please keep that in mind. We do have a little bit more detail, and it's really adapted from the author of The Alchemist, Paul Suello. Mm -hmm. Great book. Right. Really nice book, yeah. yeah. So, he, so this is our adaptation of what he said. Maybe the journey isn't so much about returning to Africa, becoming anything. Maybe the journey is about unbecoming everything that isn't really you. So you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's on our about screen. It's been up there for a long time, as a matter of fact. So we're really hoping that you all would turn there and take a look. Yeah. All right. So we are not necessarily trying to convince anyone of anything. No. 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 Not our goal. Um, we're just simply sharing. So you have freedom. You have freedom if our posts or videos don't resonate mm -hmm. or if it doesn't interest you. Like TV, you can turn the channel <laughs> and you're free to do so, okay? What our goal is is just to offer our experience and also principles. And when we say principles, we'll be evolving into those slowly because what we have found is a lot of people gave us specific instructions. Mm -hmm. And if they don't resonate with your values, then they're just telling you what they believe mm -hmm. you should do. Mm -hmm. But you may not even like that climate, that terrain. You've got to really sit down and pick out what's important to you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to think about like your, your job quality of life, monetary things, diet, age, yeah, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so please keep those things in mind. Um, without going any further, we are here in uh, 
Tanzania, Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. We live in Fumba Town. We moved from Kigali, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're recording from right now. Okay? Go ahead, Josiah. Um, we also have, um, we do have a lot of uh, comments also. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that this will be somewhat evergreen or like a, a type of video we can do more of. Um, if you've been following us for a while, you'll see that we answer as many comments and questions as we can with our own insight, opinions, whatever. Um, but we thought it'd also be cool to just record something like this and further elaborate on a lot of points or questions people had. So um, some of these are long, some of these are brief. To kick mm -hmm. it off, I have at MBK1511. It is a long statement, but it's good. People need to understand that moving to less developed areas in Africa with your American tastes and delicacies that are basic to the U.S. are not customary to the motherland. So, of course, you're going to pay more to live up to your American standards. Your fancy protein powders, mouthwashes, uh, Amazon deliveries, and fancy gourmet ice cream won't be so easily accessed. The same thing happens in reverse for immigrants coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. That came from our big video, uh, Three Reasons Why People Won't Stay mm -hmm. in Africa. Y'all have anything else you wanted to elaborate on th those points? Uh, yes, I have that. It's also that um, people come, like you say, thinking that they're going to, they're leaving America or wherever they're coming from thinking that it's going to be the same, and it's not. So it's like trying to really get your mind wrapped around that it's going to be different and what can you do to make your stay your time there uh, more of a positive than a negative so yeah yeah i would say it's all about being dynamic like adjusting to um your new your new living situation it's it's not going to be the same you can't you can't come there with that that mindset a lot of these are going to be about mindset mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. So I actually have a similar question mm -hmm. from um, at I'm gonna just say champion here. Yeah. It says the cost of living sounds expensive. How do the locals afford these everyday items? This is also from three uh, reasons why uh, big video there. Um, so what I would say to this from my experience is that the locals do not buy as much as we would mm -hmm. being from the US. They I mean in, in terms of just utilities like electric, they might pay for um X amount the and they'll 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 turn it off during certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna be using it all hours of the day. Let's mm -hmm. say they buy, you know, for like A C or something, they might only have it on for like an hour or something like they're mm -hmm. they're um using it uh wisely they're using it for when they need it so it's not that um it's not the same and when it comes to items maybe like food or things like that many of the stores here uh, which goes for uh, Rhonda and tanzania uh, since this question was from when we lived in Rhonda. Many of the stores we've been to, the carts are small. You know how you Good might point. walk into Target and mm -hmm. there's this, you know, there's the normal size cart <laughs> and then there's the small cart, which maybe your child may push around. Yeah. I think they have those in the Dollar Tree also. Yeah, they do. Uh, mm -hmm. the cents. Yeah, the, the carts here are maybe just a little bit bigger than the child ones. <laughs> in between uh, yes in between and so they're only getting what they need the stores mm -hmm. um how big would you say like the stores they're kind of maybe like 7-eleven size a little mm -hmm. bit bigger right yeah, yeah. yeah. comparison yeah there's it, no big like a costco or things like that at least where we are right <laughs> and it's the 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 conveyor belt mm -hmm. the belt things mm -hmm. they might be from my mother's leg to my brother <laughs> Josiah's, or it's this bit, it's, it's you're mm -hmm. not getting, you know, 12 boxes of cereal or whatever <laughs> on that. You're only getting what you need fruit, 
you know, vegetables, whatever, a small amount. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, the answer to that is uh, they're, <laughs> they're buying what they need and not just bulk. You got to you gotta not, you can't, um, I'll say, I would suggest not coming here with the I'm a buy in bulk mindset. So Yeah, or at least don't project it onto them. Right. Because right. mm-hmm. we can, we are privileged to be able to do that. You may be able to, if you're coming, you know, wherever in the West you might be coming from, um, just bear in mind, you know, you can shop the way you want to shop, and that's that's fine. But they, like you said, DB, they do things based on their needs, and we do things based on ours, depending on what country that you're in. Um, did you have anything else? Yeah, mm-hmm. I did. And I want to dovetail on what you just shared, Josiah, which is about projection. Because um, there was a commenter, who knows? And they said, adapt as locals do, do research. Which, yeah. all these comments have validity. I also want to caution the viewers, the listeners, in terms of what Josiah said, in terms of projection. We, as with Western mindset, could project on each other. I've had so many people say to me, you need to go and do as the locals do. Well, we have friends here who, uh, in Fumba Town, Stone Town, who've been here six plus years, don't speak Swahili and don't intend to speak Swahili, they're having a great time. So what we've really got to be careful of is realizing that each individual gets to live the life that they'd like to live. Some folks want to go to South Africa where there are huge malls Mm -hmm. and uh, it's more like the United States, Atlanta or cities like that. That's their prerogative. They can do that. They can do that. Yeah, it almost sounds like what we're saying here is, um, like you said, every country is different. And I'm thinking as you come, those of you that choose to come, you're going to see every country is different and you're going to find one that that fits you, that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What question of you or comment you have, Mom? I guess mine is a combination of some of what we've said. I had from, um, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right, Valeria Escoffrey. Uh, she was saying it like Africa is not America and when you return to Africa you really want to learn your past and present history because a lot of people come here not really knowing anything about where they're where they're going and so she was saying that you need to know that and that's what we agree with you need to know where you're coming and try to get to understand the people around you if you're going to be living here and also, we've been talking about a new mindset. You've got to really just relearn, unlearn the things that you've known. And you've got to relearn. You've got to be learning new things. And um, also not viewing Africa by false narratives. A lot of people have said different things. You get different media from wherever you live. And so when you have an opportunity to come here, you will see that it's not all the things that maybe media in the West have said. Mm-hmm. And so you're learning, man, this is it's beautiful. The people are loving. It's, it's a, it is a place I want to be. So it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, we're on, on agreement on all the things that we're saying here. So mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no, um, haven't run into any lions, um, <laughs> yeah, no elephants. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quite nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of learn the past and now the present history, that is to us coming here. Also be aware of something that we've observed, and we've been on the continent for well over a year. Does that make us authorities? No, it does not. It's, it's just we've been here for well over a year. Mm-hmm. Um, there are t- times, occasions, when we've run into uh, individuals in Africa who are not aware of the situation that occurred in the Western world much about maybe slavery, the 1600s, yep. the diaspora to the UK, the Caribbean, to Canada, to the United States. And so I would just say, you got to be um, aware that the fact that the continent was colonized meant that the education system was controlled. And so it's possible 
folks mm -hmm. either only intellectually know about what you're talking about, depending on what country you're in, right. and or they don't know intellectually and they really can't empathize with you. Mm -hmm. So just a little tidbit there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have a question that kind of goes in that mm -hmm. area. You're talking about the... Um, some of the Africans not maybe knowing as much. Mm -hmm. So this question comes from Liebman6745. Says, how come no Africans ever come from the motherland to look for their lost brothers that were taken during slavery? Anyone, it's a bunch of question marks. And yeah, it really does touch on some of what dad said. Many of them don't know with the education system. Also many, um, um, like just the um, having to deal with like the colonization and things that, that happened here mm -hmm. um, there was I will say Marcus Garvey did come mm -hmm. in the states and I believe well Google says 1916 <laughs> and he came to try to uh, help our situation but he was sadly deported um, actually he was imprisoned and then deported <clears throat> yes so it, it, it really um we were hidden very well <laughs> yes i'll yeah. say it like that yes. well put i yeah. think i want to say something more on that also that's okay yeah. i think a lot of times because maybe a lot of the people from different countries here d haven't got the full story or some of the story about slavery and still wondering why people didn't come to find their loved ones they don't know where they are. Exactly. Like, like Mark was yes. saying, some were in South America, some are in the Caribbean. They're all mm -hmm. over the place. And if, if this happened, I don't know, 200, 300, 400, however many years ago, and you, you wouldn't know where to search. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that's why a lot of times you're, you're wishing you knew, but it's like not, it, they didn't take your family and say, okay, we're taking them <clears> to <throat> this particular place. They're not <clears throat> telling you where they are so you wouldn't know where to go yeah we sometimes take for granted mm -hmm. like the receipts mm -hmm. like yes. we have yes. like you know the what is it the uh, slave ship slave name database yes. Uh, yes. archive yes. yeah um we have you know finding your roots mm -hmm. with uh brother um you know who i'm talking gates. about yes. uh henry mm -hmm. lewis gates mm -hmm. and things like that but and so sometimes we project Maybe it's a little understandable, but there's room for that to not be true. We sometimes project that here in the continent, there are receipts somewhere mm -hmm. stored some, mm -hmm. some place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've, I've been guilty of that. I like when mom, we talked about this before in this, yes. this comment, and I like how mom said that, of like, we shouldn't project that even though it makes you feel bad. I've heard other black folk, including the commenter, mm -hmm. I've heard comedians, I've said it in other interviews. Like, you know, no one came and found us. Yeah. And that one, that's real. Yeah. So you can sit with that. But it's it's of value to consider, you know, you and dad were talking, you know, 1600s. Mm -hmm. You know, what were mm -hmm. what was the records like? We mm -hmm. didn't always have, you know, high-speed internet and recording on cell phones and, and you know, um, 23andMe, whatever the case may be. Exactly. We didn't always have all of that. And there was a culture of, yes, human cargo and indentured ser servitude to slavery. There are different things like that. We were just watching like The Woman King the other day and that yeah. explored a lot of complex things with that to that question. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I guess there's no, Dad, you always say, like, there's no silver bullet. Right. What we say on Twitter, there's no gotcha. Mm -hmm. There's no mic drop for mm -hmm. why didn't they mm -hmm. come and why yes. didn't they because you could flip it on us as African Americans or black folk in the West, mm -hmm. wherever. Well, why didn't we do X, Y, and Z when we came into whatever knowledge mm -hmm. pertaining mm -hmm. to our history? Mm -hmm. Some of that comes to mind. I, yeah. oh, go on. I think also, I don't know if this holds true, but I'm gonna say it. It's like when people can't come to New York, to you know, Ellis, Ellis Island, Island, and they mm -hmm. have, you know, and you're thinking back, even if any of us have seen any kind of documentary or movies when people were coming mm -hmm. and you have the books and you write the name and you got history. Now mm -hmm. some people possibly, I don't know the fullness, but can go 
and see maybe there's ledgers that mm -hmm. say when their great great someone came over. That's <clears throat> totally different than the slavery. These slavery. are two different types of um, situations. Yes. So maybe in that situation, they had documentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in reference to, like you said, the slavery era, that, that was a, a little different. You don't always have documentation. So, but go on. Yeah, and I wanted to touch on some of what Josiah mm -hmm. said about, you know, flipping it on us. Um, we get it. We um, Not all of us are in the position to be able to just pick up and get a plane ticket. I guess it's more so the desire. Is it really in the conversation of the black community, the interest of like Africa? Mm -hmm. And um, I, a little bit more it is now, but maybe not as much mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. um, going back to being here and speaking to locals, many of them like in person, face to face, they're like, no, we didn't know about mm -hmm. the transatlantic slave mm -hmm. trade, so. Mm -hmm. All right, this is from Gigia M. Horik 468. You should have addressed communication and attitude, which tends to be a problem with black Americans. And I thought that was good. I don't know this person's background. I, I don't see an avatar or anything. So, but I still think it's something worth talking about. We talk about it all the time, just mindset of... Um, yeah, being black, being American, being Western, and communication style, general attitude. Sometimes, I think you will be a little bit of a broken record, but we talk about this at breakfast, lunch, dinner, projection. Because you grow up in what you grow up in. Right. The same thing can be said of locals here on the continent. Um, what do you say, Dad? Uh, what is it? Culture eats strategy for for breakfast, lunch, yes. and dinner. Yes. 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 Um, culture is part of that. Is just the tradition, the way you've always done or said or perceived something mm -hmm. could even be wrong or hurtful or whatever. But it's got a historical context. It's always been this way, and so I would certainly encourage black Americans from wherever in the West um, to definitely research as much as you can about Africa or anywhere. In this case, we are talking about Africa. Um, you can look at vlogs such as this one, uh, written blogs. You can look at documentaries. You can, but you don't have to be in a rush for anything. We did as much research as we could to consider, you know, do some of the countries we're thinking of going to, do they appreciate it might sound silly, but do they appreciate you trying to learn the language? Do they mm -hmm. care? Right. Yes. Um, because there are certain you, uh, certain things we take for granted, like you know the capitalism of the West. Mm -hmm. There's colonization here, but capital capitalism uh, might be different, mm -hmm. or just the way commerce and things like that goes. Pace of living here in Zanzibar, pole pole. Yes. Which means like slow, slow. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And so in the West, we're used to let's go, let's go. Sorry, yes. but in yell, we're yeah. used to blazing fast internet. We're used to Yelp reviews, mm -hmm. um, and that definitely can affect your attitude because you might think people are lazy. To be fair, we've heard from locals we befriended. They've said of their own selves. Sometimes our people can be lazy. Everyone can be lazy. Just because you're African or wherever, you're not on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. But we came from the West, and we're used right. to a certain pace. I think that can right. affect your attitude. Yeah, that, that, when you talk more about that, I thought about that. To me, the communication thing, I think the culture in, dips into that. Because you, people are saying you have people from the East, Africa, they might be more soft-spoken, more easygoing. You might yes. have people in the West yeah. mm -hmm. that are yeah. kind of talkative and out there. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, then, and so you're going to have, depending on where you're going to be, everybody's the culture is just different so the communication that all to me all enters in it's kind of intertwined with mm -hmm. how you communicate we might seem like aggressive and brash to that to people in the east but maybe in the west we're, you're okay so it all all depends on where you're coming from mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. where you're coming from be it the states be it uk or wherever and where you're landing here in um, the different um, countries in africa as what the culture is like and how the communication right. might be. Yeah. I think um, 
When Josiah mentioned this quote that I got from Peter Drucker, a management guru from the 50s and, and so forth, that is that um, strat, our culture eats strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So what that means to me is that as we're coming from a Western mindset, our culture is invisible to us. So the things that Marlene was just describing in terms of the fast pace. Someone did a survey where they just stood back in maybe New York City and clocked how fast it took someone to walk so many yards. Mm -hmm. Then they compared it to someone in Washington DC, Seattle and other places. And as you might have guessed, New York City, it's a faster pace. Yeah. <laughs> However, the person from New York City may not even realize that they're doing that right. because your own culture is invisible to you. And if you can handle this, it's sort of like talking to a goldfish. If a goldfish could talk and it's in a bowl of water and you try and explain to that goldfish, it's in water. If, forget about whether it can talk or not. It can talk. It can't understand you. But this water thing that you're trying to explain to it that's all around it mm -hmm. is invisible to it. It just... That's what happens, and so what I guess I'm thinking is that an individual choosing to uh, depart from wherever in the West they are to come to the continent, or to go anywhere in the world for that matter, um, hopefully they're humbling themselves to say, not only do I not have it all right, mm -hmm. I don't even know some of the things I don't even know all of the things that I do have right. right. Or, I'm sorry, I don't even know all of the things that I don't have right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just really don't know. And so if one has some humility like that, mm -hmm. then I think they're going to be better positioned for success. Because no one's going to do things the way you do things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Africa will, will humble you anyway. Shout out to Cousin Joy. Afro will chew you up, spit you out if you're not careful, <laughs> you know, and it's not that it's, you know, evil or anything like that. It's just it is a different culture. And sometimes it's think of it, you know, we live here, but this also applies to vacation. And remember, a lot of the time, 100 percent of the time you want to go on vacation is because you want to be pulled out of your routine. It's just Ooh, you knew you nice. wanted to do it. Right. And this temporary or whatever, you know, maybe your job's getting on your nerves, your family, I don't know. But you want to go to, you know, Hawaii mm -hmm. or, or somewhere mm -hmm. for two weeks for a month because you are anticipating all the good cultural differences. I just thought about that just now. Right. You know, how many of us go take a beach trip? We go to wherever, Disney World. Mm -hmm. You're looking forward to the cultural differences. Mm -hmm. That's something we had to do and... We hope all of those, you know, of you who are similar to us, who are maybe even more daring and you're getting something out of this, maybe consider that, anticipate the differences that will occur monetarily, health-wise, communication, um, things of that nature, and how to adapt. What airline did you take from <laughs> LAX to... Uh, Rwanda, I will say it like that because that's where we originally went. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, it was actually Qatar Airlines. Mm -hmm. I want to be honest with you guys, though. Sometimes, even though that's a direct question, sometimes I'm so hesitant to almost answer those because we still did some research to look at um, Emirates yeah. and yeah. KLM yeah. Yes. and other airlines. And it, it may be the fact that um, we got some input from friends and mm -hmm. we liked the goodie bags and things that we were going to get mm -hmm. or we might have looked at ratings of the airline. But for us, it was fun to me, y'all mm -hmm. speak for yourselves, oh, yes. to um, be at LAX, which we didn't live too far from actually, and to be there on the tarmac on this huge plane and uh, depart and land in Qatar. Uh, before the first leg. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. that was the answer to that question. Mm. Yes, as Josiah mentioned, we did fly 
business class uh my first time mine too um bless you if you know if the cards are right yeah i would suggest it for <laughs> was it like a 19 hour flight or more i um, can't remember yeah. it, let's like this a long <laughs> over, time yeah. over 10 hours yes. so yes yeah, yeah. it is encouraged if possible yeah it was it was really nice um mm -hmm. and it was it was a blessing cuz just getting the ticket was difficult. We we had quite a few stumbling <laughs> blocks, but in the end, uh, it it worked out very well. You yeah. you were holding back, Daniel. Okay, so he <laughs> mentioned quite a few stumbling blocks. We are uh, at our house in Los Angeles, and we're online. And what did it take us like three or four two, hours? Two or three yeah, two hours, or four hours. Yeah. over three hours yeah. trying to get the um, tickets, every time we would get them secured, something would happen with the system or we get close to getting them secured. Mm -hmm. um, so that was interesting. And I also want to go back to what he's, these guys said about flying business class. And let me be uh, clear to you that, about this. We trust in God. We have faith in the Most High. Mm -hmm. And we were nudged and it was a faith move for me, maybe not for these folks, but for me to try not to always in my life get the cheapest this and the cheapest that. And a friend had said, if you ever get a chance, shout out to ETM3, if you ever get a chance to uh, go, go first class, mm -hmm. uh, business class. So this family has taught me many lessons. And one of them was, if you don't, Ask, ask, the answer is already no. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. I said, well, let's check. And at first it was extremely high. Mm -hmm. And it might be when you're checking. But we kept checking yes. and yeah. all of a sudden it came down, down, down. Right. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no understanding as to why. And I said, you know what? I'm going to just try to move by faith here and we did and executed quite well and it was and i'm glad we 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 did that mm -hmm. so yeah it was fun it was um if, if you're able to do that press to do that <laughs> i think one of my next questions i had was uh from david smith and he had asked um or just commented about why not do a dna test to know the tribes that you come from so that when you come to Africa, and this is for people that are, that are pressing to come to Africa, mm -hmm. that as you get your results, that might gear you more to where you might settle. And I know we had done that before. We have done different DNA tests just to kind of know, but I never thought about it for using it as a tool to when you're gonna come here Say if, if the majority of it looked like it was Nigeria or the Congo or someplace else, would that be a place you might want to check to go and see to know more of your history? So I thought that was interesting. I'd never thought about that. I thought that was a, a, a good question from someone. So mm -hmm. anybody well, have thoughts on that? Well, I know um, just additional comments. Mm -hmm. We had done the 23andMe. Right. Mm -hmm. And feel free to correct me mm -hmm. on any of these. Mm -hmm. And... Um, We've also done an, another one, and that is um, Ancestry.com. Ancestry. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. have done both of yeah. those. Um, we learned about Bantu tribes mm -hmm. and the movement um, east to West Africa, to South, uh, South Africa, all, all over the place. So um, that was kind of interesting. The, I guess the, the thing is, it depends on how badly a person wants to wants to know that right. um, right. I'm excited about what we learned I'm just I remember you being very very yeah. excited mm -hmm. and you really helped to uh, go through that DNA research yeah that was amazing that was really yeah see and like I said the Bantu and the uh, like Khoisan and other uh, other tribes uh, Yoruba um, yeah just you know stuff I didn't grow up knowing and mm -hmm. you know especially when you meet people from other countries, whether you're still in the West or whether you come to another country. Right. Um, certainly for me, it has an impact, you know, 
talking to people who know, who have always known their background. Mm -hmm. Some people even have uh, their own tribe has a language. Like, you know, we're learning Swahili. You know, you mm. might have seen our video already. We're learning Swahili. And then to find out that even though that's spoken throughout East Africa, throughout a lot of areas on the continent, there are still tribes who already have their own, I guess you call it, maybe a local dialect. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I just say all that to say, like, yeah, doing, again, the 23andMe, all of that, is just really fascinating to see that ancient world stuff, mm -hmm. get a sense maybe for where you might fall in and just see where... The journey goes. Some of it, I don't know where it's going to go, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it was okay. exciting for me. Yeah, it was it was exciting for me, too, to see literally, like, the, do I want to say migration? Like, to see the DNA, like, like to, to visualize it's, like, the continent of Africa, and you can see, like, the, um, yeah, like the migration from like south all the way up, like east part, mm -hmm. um, close to like Morocco, mm -hmm. like Portugal, like that kind of area. Like you can literally see, like, oh, we moved here, we were there. Um, that was that was really cool to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, gives you a sense of perspective. Right, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Y'all want me to do one? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So this is from at Tava. Forty-five ninety-nine. How easy is it to move from country to country as far as getting permission mm. in Africa, in the continent? And do you pay taxes? How does that work? <laughs> All right, so there's a lot there. Um, generally speaking, I'm sure the family will have other, more mm -hmm. to say. Good question. It depends on the country. That's what we've learned. Um, mm -hmm. In some countries, you've got to have the yellow fever a uh, shot or whatever mm -hmm. um there might be other uh medical things that you have to do there might be um certain type of visa you might have i don't know how long you might stay somewhere mm -hmm. um we're gonna be a broken record we've talked about it on other video mm -hmm. videos mom and dad have talked about it but it bears repeating especially if you're new to awaken with mark you gotta do your homework you got to be that student again, because that's what we we had to do. One of the reasons we went to Rwanda, mom and dad, y'all talked about it, mm -hmm. was, for example, the organization. The governmental organization really seemed to benefit us as far as getting into the country mm -hmm. um, from any of the medical stuff we had to do. And by the way, that was at the time. Right. You have to bear that in mind, too, because things right. change yes. all the time. Anything y'all want to say about that because that's real well, well i do want to comment on or dovetail on what you were saying mm -hmm. earlier about it depends because for the people in the back row and the cheap seats listening <laughs> let me repeat what josiah said it depends on the country you could almost put that for every question yes. mm -hmm. yeah um that is critical because part of our what i've observed as a mindset, and I have it also, is we look at the continent of Africa as a country. There are 50 plus, 54, 57 something countries in Africa. As a matter of fact, you could put the United States, South America, China, China plus, Italy, all inside of a correct map of the continent of Africa. Mm. So, it depends on the country. Mm -hmm. They are not states, like right. in the United States mm -hmm. or in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're not like that. So um, each one has their own guidelines, each laws and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did pay taxes. If I purchased something mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. of Amazon, yeah, there's VAT taxes. Yeah. And you can Google these things mm -hmm. and look them up and see them for that particular country. And depending on where you are, there may be other costs that go on to something um, because of accessibility. So basically, I guess that's what I wanted to uh, just mention there uh, in terms of Josiah's question that he was fielding about country to country movement. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Well, cool. That's all y'all got. Yeah, yeah, for now. All right, cool. <laughs> Well, thank y'all. Um, thank you again for embracing yes. uh, DB, uh, Daniel, and I. We call him DB. 
Um, I hope this was fun. Uh, let us know in the comments section, what more do you want to know from us? What videos would you like us to cover? What topics would you like us to make videos about? Um, no promises, in all fairness, <laughs> that we can cover everything. You might request us to cover something that just isn't in our wheelhouse or we're not able to do it. Or in all honesty, we may not have the, the interest, you know, no, no disrespect or anything, but we want to know. Please just pepper the comments <laughs> section with, hey, can you guys make videos about health, about education, uh, stuff for senior citizens, those who are retired, um, business questions, whatever, just put them in there. Um, let us know if you enjoyed this video, just give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you'd like to see more Q and A videos pre-recorded. Maybe we can go live, something like that. Um, the channel's growing all the time. Thank you to everyone. Uh, as of this recording, we've just hit over 8,000 subscribers. Super, super grateful for that. Um, just thank God for that. Um, this was fun. This was, this was a little different. So, you know, bear with us if we were a little stiff or anything. It's just we good when we off camera, but we wanted to, you know, in a situation like this, we just wanted to try something different mm -hmm. and answer questions and give insight. And the more we do things like this, the more comfortable we'll, we'll get. So, um, again, with that, please like this video. Please share this video. Please subscribe to Awaken with, with Mark. Um, please follow the community page as well. We put cool stuff in there sometimes too. And uh, be on the lookout for the next videos that we have coming soon. Hit the notification bell so that you uh, are never late for any other content mm -hmm. that, uh, that we put out. We want you guys to catch everything. And uh, that's it, right? Did I miss anything? No. All right. Good. Well, we're the Bradleys, and uh, thank you for enjoying you. this video. We're happy to answer your questions, elaborate on your comments. We will see you on the next one. See ya. Toodles. Bye-bye.